Hi everyone and welcome back to another drawing demo and Happy New Year as well to everybody this is my first video of 2018 um, it's quite edited and it's sped up just a little bit as well in places um, the full version of this is over on Patreon there's seven videos to accompany this um, showing you all the techniques and how this was done so you can draw along if you want to so uh, I'll be happy to see you there over on Patreon Okay, so the kit that I'm using today is an A4 piece of paper that's from um, the Derwent sketching pad. Um, it's, it's basically nice quality cartridge paper, so it's got a little bit of texture to it. Um, it's quite nice to work on. And as you can see, I'm using the grid method um, to draw the scene out. So the scene's going to be a mountain scene uh, with a river in front, with the reflections and a few rocks and everything. Uh, but just for now, we're just concentrating on the line drawing. Um, the pencils I used were the Stadler Mars Lumograph and I used the Stadler Norris 2H pencil as well and also a Pentel Graph Gear 1000 with a 2B Pentel Y polymer lead in there. Um, all the links for the equipment that I used for this drawing uh, will be in the description below um, so if you want to go and check those out feel free. Um, so I'm working on the sky area at the minute just using the blending stump just to drop a very loose sky in there and then I'm going in with the HB pencil to start work on the rocks I only actually used um, I think it was just three grades of pencils actually for this drawing um, and considering the amount of tonal variation in this drawing it just goes to show you actually what you can do with just a few pencils um, you know in a situation like this where we've got more or less you know the complete grey scale apart from extreme black and extreme white um, you know we've got quite a lot of tones going on here particularly you know the subtle mid-tones um, but it was all achieved just with three pencils blending stump combination of erasers um, used a Tombow uh, mono eraser with the fine point um, blue tack for the needable eraser and I used the Derwent large pen eraser as well Also, if you're interested in drawing this scene, um, there are reference photos for this um, over on my Patreon page. What I'm starting to do now is post two of them. One of just the photo itself and another one with a grid already on it. Um, to make it simple for you, if you just want to print that off um, and use the grid that I've already provided there for you. Or, like I say, you've got the option there of using the one without a grid. Um, and you can download that to your files on your computer and put any grid size you want on it and do it in any size you want basically so you've got uh, a choice there and as always I'll pr provide a link in the description below and at the end of this video um, on the screen for you so you can just click on that and go straight to Patreon um, if you want to now obviously this YouTube video isn't going to be the full lesson um, the drawing took me about 25-30 hours um, I'm estimating that um, to do um, it might have took a bit longer actually but it was quite a long one to do so obviously you know within that time frame I've got to edit this video down quite considerably um, you know so you can see um, you know the process here from start to finish um, some of the various stages involved but obviously you're not probably going to get too many um, tips and techniques and lessons from you know just this YouTube video alone um, but hopefully you know it's a nice sample for you um, and hopefully you know you do gain some inspiration from it um, it's a lovely scene actually it's um, probably one of the one of my favorite scenes that I've seen uh, in a long while as soon as I saw it I thought well, I've just got to draw that it's um, I don't really know where it is I don't well, I'm pretty certain it's not in the UK it looks more like somewhere in America or somewhere like that I'm not too sure but wherever it is it's a really nice scene when I saw it it reminded me um, of the sort of paintings that Bob Ross used to do you know with the, the pine trees and the distant mountains and the water in front with the reflections and everything um, but obviously I'm not doing this in oil painting at the minute I'm uh, using graphite so it's going to be quite interesting to see what results I can get 
I haven't actually done anything like this in graphite for a while uh, any mountain scenes or anything um, but I did really enjoy drawing this I mean it wasn't without its frustrations but um, you know aren't all drawings like that <laughs> you know they can drag on a little bit um, but it was you know it was great fun to do this one I got really uh, involved with it and um, yeah I really enjoyed this one So up to now most of the work has been done with the HB pencil, a um, little bit here and there with the 2H and the 2B as well but the majority has been done with the HB pencil and uh, combination of the blending stump and um, the eraser as well. I found I was doing a lot of backtracking in this uh, drawing uh, and what I mean by that is you know, I draw a certain area in like these trees for example. I'd look at them and think, yep, they're finished, they look okay. Then I'd draw the tree next to it, or underneath it, or something like that. And um, then those trees just wouldn't look finished. And I'd have to sort of go back in again and rework them again. But I guess that's the nature of these kind of um, tone-rich landscape drawings, you know, where there's loads of you know little varying tones in them. Um, they, they take a lot longer than what you actually realise, you know, to keep balancing these tones as you're working through the picture really is the way to go you know although something may look finished at one point um, you know like I say as soon as something else goes in another element of the landscape goes into the picture um, you have to go back and start balancing up the tones of the element that you've just previously drawn so you know if you're having a go at something like this at home you know bear that in mind because it was one of the things that kept tripping me up with this drawing um, you know the, the tonal variations, how to keep balancing them, but I found backtracking was definitely the way to go, and not you know try and concentrate too much on the finished article, um, but just be aware that I will have to go back in towards the end of the drawing and start to balance the tones. Um, you know when I've got a more fuller picture developed. So basically, as you're looking at this right now, none of the trees are actually finished, as it were. Some of them may look it, but um, like I say, when I start adding the other elements in there, I find that I need to go back in and start altering them a little bit just to balance the tones um, so the picture all kind of fits together. Just using a small little watercolour brush there. It's just a cheap little nylon number six round brush. Um, the points wore away from it and it's kind of fraying a little bit at the ends and it's ideal for a little blending brush uh, for your drawings. I find that I can get into the smaller areas um, you know for blending with the smaller brush whereas before I used to get lazy and I just used to use my big brush you know the big dust brush I just used to use the edge or the corner of that to try and get into some of the smaller areas but um, this old watercolour brush that I've got, you know, it's not really any good for watercolours anymore. Like I say, the end's all chewed up, doesn't look very good. Um, but, you know, that makes them pretty pretty decent blending brushes. You know, when they're kind of worn down and fraying at the ends, they, they work a lot better. Whoops, what a hypocrite, look at that. <laughs> now that was actually, I think, just to rub a few razor crumbs away. I wasn't trying to blend then. Yeah, I used to use the, you know, the smaller size watercolour brushes a long time ago, but I, I kind of got lazy over the years and just kind of stuck to the one inch hake brush for pretty much blending everything really, but um, like I say, this brush had worn out, it had been sitting in my box for ages, unused, and I thought, well, let's, you know, get it back in action again and start using it, you know, to blend with. So if you want to take a look at my Patreon page, you know, it's not all big long projects like this. I've got some videos posted there specifically for beginners. I've got other videos posted there which are just tips and techniques, you know, no real finished drawing or anything, just showing you, uh, for example, you know, these foliage techniques, uh, blending techniques, erasing techniques. It's all over there, you know, there's lots of uh, information for you there if you want to pop over there and have a look. It'd be great to see you over there. There's even some watercolour videos, uh, mixed media videos, tips and techniques and all that kind of stuff as well. 
Okay, that's enough shameless plugs, isn't it, for Patreon? I won't uh, mention it again throughout this video. <laughs> um, but I've got to mention it, you know, because you know these kind of videos that are sort of edited down to ten minutes. They, they don't make good lessons at all, really, on YouTube. Uh, I mean, some people are going to get tips and techniques and inspiration from them, uh, but it's really just a taster, you know, of what's over on my Patreon page. Um, you know, just to show you what it's all about, really, the sort of drawings that we do over there. We've got members there that are complete beginners to people, you know, that are selling their artwork and quite accomplished. So um, it doesn't matter what level you're at, um, you know, we've got a great community over there, supportive people that post their work there. Um, you know, you'll be totally welcome and encouraged over there. Um, so, yeah, there we go. Right, so I'm just on the last part of the foreground now. Just putting in the shade underneath the trees using various combination of pencils and I'm just kind of blending it in a little bit as well with the blender. In the, these areas, you know, they're quite simple really, there's nothing much to them. Same with these river banks here. Um, it's nothing more than graphite laid down with the blender. Um, you know, and a few rocks added on top. You know, it gives you quite an effective uh, look for sort of a beach um, embankment there. Right, so the drawing's just about finished. I hope you like that. Um, I look forward to seeing you over on Patreon. So thanks very much for watching. Um, take care, everybody, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.